All right, so the, the sixth question, this one you have to figure out the LCD of all the bottoms, right? If you wanna put a one here, you can, you don't need to, it, it's kind of pointless. You're gonna multiply everything by X squared. The goal is to get rid of all of the bottoms, right? So every fraction, even though this is not technically a fraction, I mean, it is, there's a one under it. Everybody get, has to get multiplied by the X squared. And then you just do the division. Here they cross out, right? They go away. And here they cross out. Here there's nothing to cross out. Here this X crosses out one of those, right? There's two and there's one. So you're left with one after you do the crossing out. So when you get on top, this six and that X hook up, the plus stays. That X squared is gone now. Five times one is five. So that's what you get on top. 36 times X squared there, the minus stays. Those crossed out because you divided them away. So you're left with this. Now, a dumbass thing would be to start trying to cross these out. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah, what you have to do is factor. The top does not factor. There's no GCF, it's not a trinomial. There's not even a squared. The bottom factors, it's a difference of squares. So you're gonna do something times itself to make 36 something times itself to make 25. You give them opposite signs, that's type three. And then you notice that you can cross out. When you cross them out, you have to be careful, put a one there. Make sure the one goes on top. That's the, that's the tr little trap that you can fall into. You forget to put the one on top and then you, know, you get it wrong. All right, so this is six C off of the practice test. So you have a two, a three, Y, and then a two and then a Y. So the least common multiple or LCD, whatever you want, the least common multiple of two and three is six. And as long as one of those fractions has a Y in it, this, this is what you need. You have to multiply them all by six Y. So I'm gonna put six Y on all the tops. And then I'm just gonna divide all of the bottoms away. These different colors, so it's obvious. Six Y cut in half leaves me with three Y. Here, the y's will cross out. You're going to divide six by three, and then you're going to cross out the y's, so you're only left with a two. And again, these are products. you got to multiply them. So I'm going to multiply the top. I have three y times three y. Three times three is nine. Y times y is y squared minus. Now here, everything went away except for the two. So you do two times two, which is four. Now I'm going to play the same game on the bottom. I'm dividing six y by two. That leaves me three y. Here, the y's cross out, but you're left with that six. So you're doing six times one. So I'm gonna do three y times three, which is nine y. This one's very tricky. Then you get one times six, which is six. Now it's not easy to spot what to do. Some people will try to cross these nines out, which again, this is a, this is a dumbass move. You don't do that. The top is difference of squares. So it's three y plus two, three y minus two. Right? Something times itself to make nine, something times itself to make four. And you need the y's there. The bottom, even though it might not look like the bottom factors, six and nine are both divisible by three. So it's a GCF. So you divide the three away. You know, if you need to put it underneath, put it underneath. So you get three y plus six divided by three is two. So they cross, right? Get rid of them. Now you can cross those out and you're left with three y minus two over three, but there's a trap, right? You're like, I'm gonna cross out the threes and get y minus two. You have to stop. The problem is over and that's your answer. Okay, so 2b is the type five factoring. This is the one where your goal is to, is to just cheat. You're gonna get rid of that 12 by multiplying the last number by 12. So you're gonna do five times 12, that turns out to be 60. And then you're just going to factor it, right? The first step was to move the number and get rid of it and then break it down. So my signs are going to be negative and plus. Now, there's a lot of pairs that make 60. 60 is divisible by one, two, three, four, five, six. The only pair that's going to make a four when you subtract them, right? Different signs means you subtract. You're going to have to pick 10 and six. 10 times six is 60. And when you do negative 10 plus six, you get the negative four in the middle that you're supposed to have. Now. Normally you'd be done. But the problem is that this number, you just multiply, you multiply this number is multiplied by 12. <laughs> it's supposed to be a five, not a 60. So you have to divide the 12 out to put the numbers back the way they're supposed to be so they make five. 
But if you if you take this fraction now and you put this 12 up here and you put this 12 up here, it's not going to work. 12 times 12 is not 12. And you're still going to have a 10 and a 6. That's not 5. What you have to do is you have to break those fractions down, right? You have a 10 and 12. You got to cut them in half and make it 5 over 6. Here you have to, right, you have a 6 and you have a 12. 6 goes into 12 twice, right? 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Now you're left with two numbers on the bottom, a 6 and a 2. This 6 goes up there to make 6x. The negative 5 stays there, right? This 5 on top stays there. This 2 on the bottom comes up. That plus 1 stays there. Now check. 12, right? 6 times 2 is 12. 5 times 1 is 5. Make the rainbow. You get 5 and 2, that's negative 10, negative 5. And then 6 and 1, make positive 6. That makes the negative 4 in the, in the original. Right, you're trying to make that the original. So it works. So again, multiply, factor it. Don't forget to divide the number out and reduce it. If you don't reduce it, it's, the trick doesn't work unless you reduce the fraction before you move the numbers up. All right, so question 4A from the practice. This is simplifying the fraction. Again, very easy to make a lot of little mistakes here. You might want to start crossing stuff out, 6 into 18, 4 into 12, but it doesn't work that way. When things are separated by a plus or a minus, when they're attached that way, you can't cross them out. All you can do is factor. Now, on the top, you have x4, x3, so they have letter in common. You have a 4 and a 6, so these are both divisible by 2. So you're going to factor out a 2. And you're going to factor out x to the third, which is the smaller power. You always take the smaller one they have in common. 6 divided by 2 is 3. x4 divided by x3 leaves you with 1. Minus 4 divided by 2 is 2. This x third and this x third cross out. You divided it away, it's gone. Now you're going to factor a similar way on the bottom. You have 18 and 12. These are both divisible by 2. Yes. They are both divisible by 3. But the biggest number that divides them is 6. And then you have x2 and x3 in common. So you pick the smaller one, which is x2. And you divide it away. And I'll give you three guesses. What's going to go here? <laughs> it's it's going to be the same thing, but just make sure. 18 divided by 6 is 3. x3 take away x2 leaves you with 1. The minus sign goes along for the right. 12 divided by 6 is 2. That x squared and that x squared crossed out. So that's by design. You must get the same thing here because you're not going to be able to cross it out if you don't. Now, this is where people get stuck. So you crossed out the common thing, and then you got here. But this isn't finished. You can reduce these numbers, right? I mean, I'll, I'll write it in a ridiculous, you know, third grade way. Six is three times two, right? I wrote out X to the third, and I wrote it X squared. Now, just cross out, right? The twos cross out. Those X's cross out, those X's cross out. You're left with one X upstairs and you're left with a three downstairs, right? So you just, you just keep putting a two into the six and you're crossing out those with one of those. You don't have to do this, what I just did. That was just to illustrate, you know. Some people, you know, this is helpful for some people to write it out that way. So if you need to write it out that way, but either way, two goes into six, X squared goes into X cubed. So that reduces a lot after you crossed out. So 2A from the practice sheet. Now, before I start doing it, I want to point out, this actually looks a lot like a perfect square. But if you, if you remember, it's very important that you realize that I don't put type 4, which is a perfect square, with any other type 5 or type 6. Type 5 will be all alone. So how do you know this is not a perfect square? This is not positive. Remember, a perfect square is something times itself. So if you did something times itself, you would not get a negative four, you get a positive four. So even though actually this kind of looks like type four, it's not, it's type five. So the first step is to multiply the nine over to the four, right? This is the trick. Nine times four is 36. And then you just factor it. This is why this is type two now. You cheat, you turn type five into type two. The signs are minus and plus. The only way you're gonna make a five you know, 12 and three make 36, but they don't make five. You have to pick nine and you have to pick four. Negative nine plus four adds up to negative five where you subtract them, you get negative five. Nine times four is 36. Now, the problem is again, 
this number is off by nine. So you have to divide the nine back out. Here, when you do it, nine divided by nine is one. There's nothing to do. You don't have to say, just do nine divided by nine. Here, you can't divide four by nine. This fraction is not reducible. These, you know, four is divisible by two. Nine is not divisible by two. Nine is divisible by three. So you can't reduce that. So all you can do is take that nine on the bottom and move it up in front of the X and the plus four stays exactly where it is. Nine X times X, nine X squared. Negative one times four is negative four. And again, you can make the rainbow. You get negative nine there. You get positive four there, those are X's. So that's negative five in the middle. It's negative five X, I just was lazy, didn't want to write the X. Okay, so there you go. All right, so 5A from the practice, not the review. So first step is to factor this bottom. If you don't, you don't know what this fraction needs. The goal is to give the, you know, make them look the same. So I know one of these things is going to be X plus three. So I'm going to factor it and then I'm going to erase it and put it there. So I know it's X and X. I know it's minus and plus. I mean, I already know one of them is going to be X plus three. So, you know, the other one has to be a five. Negative five plus three, the numbers, negative five plus three. When you subtract them, you get negative two. Negative five times plus three is negative 15. So now I'm going to get rid of that and put this there. Right? The goal, make them look the same. This first fraction, you don't mess with now. This is my LCD. That's what it is. I don't need to do anything to that first fraction. You can't do anything. This X plus 19 is there so that after you do this fraction, you'll combine the like terms and get something to simplify. That's why I chose the, I, these numbers are not there by coincidence. They're there for a reason. So now this fraction is missing the X plus, uh, the X minus five. So you have to give him the X minus five top and bottom. So now you made the bottoms the same. This is where I like to be lazy and I don't write it, but I will this time. So that fraction had X plus 19, right? The bottoms are now the same. You've made them the same. So now it's time to put them together into one fraction. I am going to distribute this to save myself time. So I'm going to do two times X and then be careful, two times negative five. Now, all you can do is put everything together. You can put X and two X to make three X. 19 take away 10 is nine, positive nine. Now you understand in a second why I had the 19 there. I needed a nine here and a three here so that I could factor out the three, right? This leaves you with X, right? Divide this by three, divide this by three. Check, three times X, three X. Three times three, nine. If I didn't do that, if I didn't have a 19 here, <laughs> I wouldn't have got a nine here and I wouldn't have been able to factor it and cross out. That's the whole point. I chose what to put here so that when you got to this step and combined, you'd get something to factor and then you cross out the common factor and then you're done. You get three on top, you get X minus five on the bottom. So everything in this question was very carefully designed so that when you got to the last step, you were able to factor and cross out. This is what I want. So don't, don't let this distract you and bother you and think you need to do something with it. You don't do anything with it till you get to here and you're combining everybody together. All right. All right. So for C, the problems are done in complete randomly chaotic order. Same thing. You, you got to reduce the fraction and you have to do it by factor. You cannot cross anything out that is separated that is connected to something else with a plus or a minus. If it's connected to something else with a plus or a minus, you can't cross out separately. So on the top, you got GCF. The only thing you can divide eight and six by is two, two, and you can factor out the Y. So you're gonna divide eight by two, you get four. One of those Y's got taken out. Six divided by two is three, and then that Y got taken out. I don't like the way that looked there. Now on the bottom, I'm going to start the bottom over here because the bottom is actually two, two steps. 32 and 18, you can divide 18 by two, by three, by six, by nine. But the only other number that divides 32 is two. So your first step of the bottom is to factor out the two. Cut 32 in half, you get 16. 
What about the y squared? It has to stay. There's no, they don't have a, these don't have a letter in common. So you can't factor out a y. He doesn't have a y to give you. What you can do though is cut the 18 in half and make it nine, right? So the bottom had a GCF of two, but that's, you, you can't stop there. The bottom is type six, which is the mixed, which means it's got two steps to go. So first you factor out the two, yes. But then you, you end up with a type three. That's a difference of squares. So you got to factor that. And again, I'll give you three guesses what's going to be down here. Something times itself to make 16. And then something times itself to make nine. You're going to cross these out. That's the whole point. This is by design. Now this is very tricky. So then you write this and you're like, oh man, I got this all day. It's so easy. Except that you have two times y and then two times this shit. So you could cross out those twos because there's not a plus between them. These are, this is not two plus y, right? It's not attached by a plus or a minus. It's attached by a times and you're allowed to cross out with times. So you cross out those twos. I mean, this is, a, this is a very good question and it's very, very similar to the one on the test where one of them, you had to do two steps, GCF, keep going. The top was straightforward. The top was just normal type one, GCF. But the bottom was very advanced. You had to do both steps. You had to cross out. And then you had to recognize that you can still reduce more with the twos. Okay, so number seven from the practice. Again, I'm going to do J and H. I'm going to do H first because it's a little easier. The bottom number, whenever you see a fraction, the bottom number is the root. So the first step is to put the square root. Now, the million-dollar question is, does the negative go in or does it go out? If the negative is in the parentheses, then it goes in the radical. And, you know, if you want to put the two here, put the two there. That's what square root is. The, the two belongs there, and you can put the three up there. You don't have to write the two. It's understood to be there. Now, you can't do this. You can't take the square root of a negative. This is undefined, so we write BS. We know what it means, but we call it bogus solution. Now this one, but I want to point out, if the, if the question had been this without, without the parentheses, then your first step would have been this. The negative is not in the parentheses, then it is outside of the radical. And then you could do it. You would, you would just do square root of 16, which is four, and then four to the third, and then make that negative. All right, so now this one, if the negative is in the parentheses, it's going to be in the radical. Now, this time it's a cube root. Remember, the bottom number is the root. So you put your radical thing, you put the three. The negative is going to go inside because it's inside there. And then outside, the top power is two. The cube root of negative 64, something times itself three times to make 64. Well, that's got to be four. But since I have a negative, and an odd, it's going to be negative four. And you know, you could very easily four times four times four, that's 16. 16 times four is 64. Negative times negative is positive. Positive times negative is negative. So if you did, that's if you cubed negative four, you would get negative 64. So that's why the cube root is negative four. Now I got to square that. This negative is in the parentheses. So it is being done to that power. So negative four times negative four is positive 16. You do not have to write the plus. I'm just writing the plus for emphasis. You can just write 16. 